Well, welcome. My name is Dan Pennock. I'm a soil scientist at the University of Saskatchewan. And what I'd like to talk about in the video today is the sort of sampling implements we use for soil sampling in the field and why we would select one implement over the other. There's two main types of samples that we take. One is a grab sample where we don't really care about the volume of the soil that we're taking. The second is a core or fixed volume sample and that maintains the volume as well as the mass of the sample. And any measurement that re requires the bulk density requires a core sample. And for many types of sampling, that's a very important property to measure. So I'll start by demonstrating the two common ways that we might take a grab sample. So a soil pit, the soil pit I have beside me here, if we wanted to take a grab sample by horizon, we simply dig the soil pit. We can see at the top of this a darker topsoil layer, and we can take a sample from that, put it in a bag, and this is our grab sample of that horizon. However, we have no idea what the volume of that was, and hence we cannot calculate a bulk density for it. Soil pits are quite time consuming, and somewhat disruptive for the field. And what we would often use instead is an auger, a very common type is what we call a Dutch auger. The Dutch auger is very widely used. It has different widths of opening that we can use for different types of soils. As well, some augers are segmented and we could add additional pieces and go down several meters into the soil in the right material. The Dutch auger is a very efficient way to take a sample from the soil. We auger down and we can lay that sample out if we wish into, in this case, an eaves trough. And continuing augering down into that material. The second increment we take The upper part of it is collapsed material from the material itself. And with the Dutch auger, each increment is approximately 10 centimeters in depth. So we take successive increments, lay them out in our core. And each increment we take then is approximately 10 centimeters in depth. So it's very efficient to reach depths of approximately a meter or so in the soil, the difficulty is that their augering action obviously churns up the material. So we get mixing between the layers and it's very difficult to tell the exact horizon thickness because of the mixing associated with the auger. So it's very efficient, we can take a lot of samples quickly, but we don't get very good integrity of the horizons associated with it. So. The other type of sampling involves some sort of fixed volume. So for example, this is a small core, and from a soil pit, what we would do is drive this core into the side of the pit with a hammer or some other device. When the sample comes out, we cut it off and it has a fixed volume associated with it, and it's very easy after drying to calculate the bulk density of that sample. So that would be from a soil pit. We also have devices like this root sampler. So the root sampler has serrated teeth on the bottom of it. And when we lower it in the soil, and we sometimes call this a Armstrong sampler because it requires strong arms to press it into the soil. and it has a handle on it and extrudes a very nice sample from the soil. So again, we've kept the volume of it. We can measure the mass, dry it, and then very easily get a bulk density measurement from it. So there's various types of root samplers on the market all of which may work on the same basic principle. 
Now, for taking a lot of samples in a short period of time, such as, for example, agronomic assessments of plant available nutrients, often we would use some sort of truck mounted device like the one behind me here. This is a Giddings hydraulic drill. It's uh, colloquially called a punch truck, and it's very widely used in Western Canada for taking multiple samples from a site using it. So I'm going to start it up now and uh, show you how it's used and how we can use it to extrude cores. <clears throat> Safety considerations would suggest I should put on the ear protection. It's often a good idea to use a lubricant. Once we have the core, we can again easily extrude it into an eaves trough or some other way of looking at the depth of the core. Oops. And if it's the right moisture, it extrudes very easily. From here, we can ex uh, measure the various horizons, segment it and bag it, and very easily take samples down to 1.5 meters or more. The punch truck allows us to put on extensions, and in the right material, we can go down to five or 10 meters if required. So a very efficient way to take multiple samples from a site with a fixed volume, but again, a somewhat uh, complex piece of equipment for routine sampling. Any of these devices work very well, depending on the question, the specific soil sampling question you've been asked to answer.